Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another, uh, I guess this is a race review, the Advent Health 400 at Kansas Speedway. I'm going to show off my pin real quick. There you see it, Advent Health 400 at Kansas Speedway, May 7, 2023, and you can actually see the state of Kansas uh, as the kind of checkered background. That's the shape of the state of Kansas. The star is where the Speedway is, so kind of a cool pin there uh, to go in there, and uh, we'll show you right where that's about to go. Yeah, right there. So we do have another addition to the scene in person. And guess what, guys? I got to see Denny Hamlin win for the third time. Uh, he now ties Kevin Harvick for the uh, second place on the all-time race craze has seen win in person list. Joey Logano leads the all-time series with four. Uh, Kyle Larson at two. And um, then there's a bunch tied at one between Truex and A.J. Allmendinger, Kurt Busch, Chase Brisk or Chase uh, Elliott, uh, who else? Chris Busher, Bubba Wallace, Ricky Stenhouse. So a lot of guys tied at one. But anyway, nonetheless, let's get into it. So yeah, I went down on Friday. Uh, when I got down there Friday, I we went to Top Golf, had a good time. Just never been to one of those before. They're pretty fun, a little expensive. I mean, I should say they're a little expensive. They're not terrible, but not something I'm going to do regularly or anything like that. Um, so had a lot of fun there. Saturday went to the truck race, uh, but that morning I actually met up. Uh, I won't I won't say specific names just because I don't like to don't 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 like to put, bring too much attention to someone. But I did meet up with someone. Um, actually got him a couple of Chase Elliott diecasts in exchange for tickets um, to the race, which uh, we exchanged at the Chase Elliott appearance. Uh, so I'm actually going to show you a couple of the cars that I have from that appearance. Um, so yeah, we were in line, was able to get kind of that trade uh, taken care of, got him a Chase Elliott number seven Bristol ver raced version truck and a uh, Elliott family traditions car where it has the Bill Elliott side and the Chase Elliott side um, for both their championships. So um, anyway, let's show you what we got. So we got to take in a few different cars. I brought in uh, four total. This is the first one, the Chase Elliott NASCAR Cup Series champion. You can see he did get a great signature, Chase Elliott, and then he puts nine on there as well. Um, you know, it's got the yellow door number on each side. You can see it's the standard 2020 Napa car in Elite. So for those of you wondering, you saw me sell all my champion logo on the roof cars. Not this one. I sold the ARC, but the Elite stays here. Um, so I did decide, not decide, I definitely am not planning to get rid of this at all now. I was never planning to, but uh, now it's locked in place, you know. Um, the other car I got signed, um, or one of the other cars I got signed, was his 2014 uh, Nationwide Series Championship car. So I'm going to actually slide this out of the way so I can get my arm in here. Uh, but there you can see, sell, signed that the same way. We've got Chase Elliott and the number 9 there. And then you can see the metallic Napa Blue. We've got that bright yellow spoiler or splittered down below. There's the uh, Elite detail to it. So I'll go around to the right side. There you see that mirror hanging off the side. Flip it up, and you can see all the detail underneath. So yes, the two Elite Championship cars have been signed now which is always a goal of mine it was really cool to get those uh signed i actually brought them to the last chase appearance but when they said you could only get two cars signed i chose the baja blast liquid color um and then my sister's kansas win instead of that so this time it wasn't quite as busy so we were able to get a couple more signed so this time i actually brought two more uh the other one or the other, the first of the other two is going to be this one, the Chase Elliott Kansas win in color chrome. You can see how shiny that is. We've got a great signature on there. Um, I mean, the signatures, I don't care what they look like that badly. You know, I just, as long as they don't look terrible, uh, where they're, you know, really bad in terms of the marker or stuff like that. But again, overall, it's the experience that's worth it. The signature itself looks good. Sure. Great. But you know, it's really about the experience more than anything. So, uh, but yeah, the color Chrome got signed. And then I'm guessing you guys will get, you guys have probably already guessed it. The next one is the liquid color, the absolutely gorgeous Kansas win with the liquid finish. Um, brought this out down to Kansas and now I have all three Kansas win raced or all three versions between standard liquid and uh, color chrome all signed by Chase Elliott. So that's pretty cool that I was able to get all three signed in person. I didn't even have to, you know, go get one autographed or whatever. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, Saturday morning. Then we went to the, actually I'll turn here so you guys have something cool to look at. Um, then we went to the uh, truck race Saturday night. I skipped the ARCA race. It was blazing hot down there. 90 something degrees, like blazing hot. Um, so yeah, we skipped the ARCA race, skipped most of practice and qualifying. Actually, we skipped to all of practice and qualifying. Um, and then just kind of came to the track a little bit early. Um, 
and was able to pick up, uh, I guess I could show you what I picked up. I uh, picked up a couple things when I got to the track because I wanted to see what they had. First of which, the 2023 Napa number 9 uh, has recently or just came out and was flown over. So pretty cool that this thing was in already. So I decided to pick this one up and um, I actually have the review posting right after this video, probably later today. So this posts at about noon, that'll post at three. So stay tuned, see a sneak peek of this car. Not available anywhere else as far as I can tell, maybe not so, but either way, I got to be the first one to review it. So I'm pretty happy. Um, but yeah, so I picked that up. Uh, also picked up another another little sneak peek uh, of one that came in. This was the, uh, the Hooters Night Owl car for 2023 as well. So picked up a couple of them. Uh, enjoyed the truck race. It was a great race. The sun went down and everything cooled off nicely. I when I say cooled off, it was still 85 degrees, but the uh, the weather was fantastic. The racing on the track was pretty good. I was uh, pretty bummed out in the mid-stages. Uh, I was rooting for Raja, Carruth, and... Um and Matt Benedetto, they were running third and fourth uh, at the same time. And it was like, dang, this is fun to watch. I'm glad they're doing so well. And then um, literally right after that, uh, Majeski hooks Carruth. And the very next restart, Ekis hooks De Benedetto, and they both get wrecked out. And so I was just so freaking frustrated. Like, you got to be kidding me. Um, so yeah, a little bummed about how it ended, how that all went, but overall, Grand Enfinger had a great truck. Um, I saw it right away on the first three laps of the race. I said, that 23 looks better than, um, you know, most other trucks. And, uh, sure enough, by the end of the race, he was the guy to beat and no one could really catch him. So, uh, cool looking truck. Hopefully they offer it. No word on it yet, but hopefully they, uh, they do end up offering that one because I thought it looked really, really good. Uh, fast forward through that, uh, Saturday night, the race gets over. Um, I have some video and stuff from that, but then we go out to the car and we actually drove about five minutes away to the AMC movie theater, um, up the road and went to Guardians of the Galaxy. By the way, guys, Guardians, great movie, really fun to go watch. So I highly recommend it. Uh, probably if you're a Marvel fan, it's the best Marvel movie since Endgame, but overall just, it's a very entertaining movie. It, it's not, it's not bad. There's not moments that make you just cringe so hard because they're, they're trying to make it s seem some way or something. It was just, it was a fun, entertaining movie. So, uh, highly recommend it. But then yeah, did that, got, got out of there about one thirty two, probably one thirty in the morning. Um, get back, uh, and you know, go to sleep. And then the next morning it's time to go to the, uh, cup race. So wake up uh, Sunday morning, Get all our stuff ready on the way to the track, or I should say on the way. We get all packed up. Uh, we start heading towards the track. We stop about partway there. For those of you who don't know, our strategy for Kansas has always been, or recently has been, uh, on our way to the racetrack, we stop at a subway, and we pick up uh, two subway sandwiches that we have as our at-the-track food because we don't want to spend too much money at the track, um, you know. I trade diecast for tickets, so uh, you know I'm I'm kind of on the cheap, but I'm I'm okay with it. But um, so yeah, we we trade it, or so we stopped and got some Subway, uh, and then overnight I freeze uh, two water bottles solid with ice, so those are my ice packs, so that even then at least when your quote unquote ice pack melts, you can still drink it, uh, which we did. So um, packed all that up, brought it to the racetrack. First thing we did, uh, I'm gonna reach over here, is uh, we went over to the Noah Gregson holler. Uh, where he was signing and got this car autograph. This is the Wendy's number 62 car, his first Cup Series die cast that was made. And so you can see Noah, as always, does a great job signing. Always good with the fans. Not always good with Ross Chastain. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, I got him to sign that one. And we also brought this car along. So uh, all the Noah Gregson Cup cars thus far have been autographed uh, that I have at least on hand. So uh, he's got like five more coming, I believe, so far. And uh, so, yeah, there, there's going to be a list like a mile long probably by next year. Um, but, yeah, got both of those autographed. That was great. It was fun to uh, get a chance to chat with Noah. Um, hmm. We also got two hero cards, but I don't see them. I must have already put them in the binder. Um, but, yeah, they got two. He, he gave us two um, Wendy's hero cards. He just, you know, basically had been signing them in between people and then just handed them out. So he was just kind of giving them away. Um, but, yeah, so we got two hero cards as well. And so we put those in our uh, our binder where, that uh, me and my sister share that just has all those things in it. So, um, you know, we've got multiple different cars, drivers, and everything. We just put them all in a binder, and it's kind of cool to go back and look through it. But uh, So that was Noah's appearance. Then after that, we went into the gate and went over to the pickleball court area, or what they call the High Line District, new to Kansas Speedway. And uh, there was a Denny Hamlin appearance. And uh, I got a couple of Denny Hamlin cars autographed. Um, and I'm going to tell a quick little story, because this is pretty funny. So for those of you who don't know, you can see the autograph there is in black. And you guys know I'm not a huge fan of doing it in black. However, 
That being said, I don't want to hear anything negative about Denny Hamlin. You'll probably notice there's two other colors here. That's right. I had a silver marker. Uh, or sorry, I had a bronze marker. So you can kind of see a little bronze in there. A little like copper color almost. Uh, my marker didn't work. For some reason, couldn't sign. Then he tries the silver marker. Guess what? Silver marker. He tries that. It didn't work. And then he just said, here, you know what? I'll use this one. So he took the black one out and it worked put it on there. So I am not disappointed at all. Uh, I mean, would I have loved to get it in silver? Sure. But I don't, I am just fine with that. I've actually got a funny story now with this, with the three different colors where he tries to start the signing, which is just cool. Um, so yeah, Denny was great. I mean, I was geared all up in chase stuff and everything and he still stopped and it was, it was awesome. Like he just took his time, made sure to sign for everyone. You can see here, this is the Kansas win. Uh, he got that one, uh, as well. Like I said, he used the marker that worked. So, um, you know, obviously, yeah, I wish I could redo it and have a good silver marker or a paint pen on me, but overall, it's got a cool story, and the good news is I never have to pack these up again. I don't want to have to travel with these when they have the, the extra sticky type of confetti on it because you're just likely to eventually lose pieces off of it and whatnot. So I'm glad these are signed and I can kind of leave them in place, and guess what? I've got another Denny Hammond now. So he goes out and wins a race, and now i got to get another one, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, let me back this up even more because I'm running out of room. Uh, so, yeah, then uh, got those two signed. After that, um, went under the grandstand, had a little bit of lunch, literally drank four bottles of water each. I kid you not. Drank through that icy bottle of water, filled it up, drank another bottle of water, filled it up, drank another bottle of water, filled it up, drank it again, and then topped it off again. By then, the ice was pretty well gone. When you when you cool that much water uh you lose it fairly quickly um but it was hot it was really hot and really sunny um we went down on the racetrack for the pre-race pass where you can walk through the infield i got some pictures of some really cool cars chris busher shout out he had a really cool looking race car tyler reddick had a pretty cool car um noah's car was just normal but i took a picture anyway because i mean i like noah's car i like noah noah's awesome um so i got a picture of his car got a picture of the guardian's car that brad was running as well uh, I'm trying to think if there was anyone else that I got a picture of that had a unique paint scheme. Oh, the mac and cheese car for Stenhouse was kind of cool too. Um, so I got those pictures, and then after we kind of wandered the infield for a little bit, um, you know, we wandered around back there for a little bit, and then eventually decided to go back up on, into the shade uh, under the grandstands. And we actually sat under the grandstands until the national anthem. And so I was actually sitting under the under the grandstands when the, I thought about it, and I hear the uh, the phrase, you know, and the home of the brave. And of course, in Kansas City, for those who don't know, you'll probably hear them say, "and the home of the," and you just hear this kind of crowd roar. That's Chiefs, and the home of the Chiefs. So same thing at that speedway. Um, but yeah, they the national anthem happened. Then I go. I actually you will, you'll see it in a video later. But um, I go out and film the flyover real quick. I I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. So I quick had to grab my phone and get what I could. But um, yeah, just sort of like had to get out of the sun for a little bit. You know, headache. Just just too much sun. Too much heat. Uh, you know, we've been sitting in the 50, 60 degree weather up here in North Iowa forever, and we go down there and it's ninety five. Like whew, we were not prepared for that level of heat. Um, but yeah, then the race got started. It was a little hot, but actually really nice. After about two hours, the sun goes behind the press boxes, and so we're in the shade. Um, and the racing was, I mean, what else can I say? And I'm sure you guys saw it on TV. The racing was spectacular. I mean, it was incredible racing. Uh, we were treated to so many different leaders, so many different competitive cars, so many storylines. You have Byron speeding, Bush speeding. You got Larson going for a spin early. You know, it didn't seem like anyone could really get the lead and run away with it. Truex and Hamlin were trading blows back and forth for the lead like the entire first stage. Um, you know, I was as an Elliott fan, I was really concerned. The first run of the race, he was like 26th. I mean, he looked terrible. And uh, first pit stop, they got a lot better. Next pit stop, they got a better again. And by the third pit stop, they're getting up into the top 10. And uh, sure enough, you know, end of stage two, a weird caution kind of fell. He was running fifth. And um, they shuffled the whole field as far as who finished where. Uh, so didn't show on the stage results, but, you know, had a had a top five car uh, at, at its best. So um, was able to take the lead late. I can't even explain the energy in the grandstand when he and Larson were battling for that lead, and he cleared him out of four. Uh, the entire grandstand, or a good chunk of the grandstand, stood up and was kind of on their feet watching that battle for the lead happen. Same thing happened late, of course. Um, but, man, just what a, what a great race. I mean, start to finish, good racing. Honestly, NASCAR, I, I will say this as... As much as I have ripped on them in the past, I thought their attention to detail this today on race control was spot on. I mean, there was not a lot of wasted laps. There was maybe one opportunity that they could have opened pit road a lap earlier. 
Um, and they, you know, they ran an extra lap that I thought they might, they, they could have probably had that open, but there was a wrecker that was just getting somebody off, but they, ob- I think they obviously could have had it that lap. But I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Race control did a much better job today of like quick, quick, fast yellows, quick turnaround, quick cleanups. It didn't seem like we were just riding under caution for endless amounts of laps for no reason. Truck race, on the other hand, we did have a few of those. But cup race, I mean, I didn't, at no point did I feel like there was extended long cautions that didn't need to be that way. So I hope that was something they're going to continue to do, but I have a bad feeling it was literally just because we had so many cautions that, um, you know, they may have not felt the need to do that, I guess. So I'm hoping it's the opposite, but like I said, Overall, the racing, spectacular, had a absolutely phenomenal finish. I mean, what else can you say? Like, great racing, and I'll say it this way. That race there was more exciting than a green-white checker, and I'm going to explain why in about five quick seconds, which is build up, build up, build up. That's it. You had 25 laps from when Denny Hamlin got around William Byron to when he got Larson. 25 laps of build up, watching him edge closer and closer and closer and that tension that builds as you're watching it is what makes the finish that much better chicago was the same thing you're watching larson close in close in close in he starts to fall behind but then newman blocks kyle and all of a sudden he's there and that build-up is what helps create these very memorable finishes you know the build-up to the finish just having a quick restart with two to go you know there's a ton of green white checkers that don't have a very memorable race behind them this one's going to be incredibly memorable, and it didn't need the green-white checker because of all that buildup that came to the finish. So, I mean, 10 out of 10 race. I can't complain about a single thing. It was just fantastic all the way around. Um, my section was booing Denny very heavily. I had a lot of flat-out, honestly, insane Larson fans, like full-blown delusional level. Like, I, you know, basically they thought Denny Hamlin, dirtiest driver ever, just completely wrecked him on purpose, you know, and it's like I, I could tell when I was watching that happen. Well, you know, the angle that Larson hit the wall at, that's not an intentional. Like, if you're going to intentionally spin him, you're going to spin him all the way around, not, you know, he gets kind of uh, edged or nosed into the fence a little bit and then corrects it. Um, so overall, though, fantastic race. Then you get to the fight in the pits. The crowd obviously loves that. So we sat up in the grandstands for probably 10 15 minutes after the race was over just soaking it all in because it there was just i mean it was like the perfect sunday and i'm talking ice cream sunday the perfect ice cream sunday of a race just everything was perfect it had just the right toppings and and the right mixture and the right flavors and the right temperature and everything was just perfect and then there was a fight on pit road which is the cherry on top just add that little cherry on top and mwah, perfect i believe that was uh bianchi had said that about that in the teardown so if you think i'm copying i am a little bit but i mean it was the perfect analogy that fight just put a little cherry on top that was absolutely a bonus to the race that was fantastic and fun um obviously i was bummed that noah didn't get the ride the run he deserved he was running top 12 when ross put him in the fence which i was obviously frustrated about any gregson fan would be i mean you know you're watching him run his honestly his most competitive run this year so far on any of these types of tracks and noah was running a really good race today he fell back and then fought his way back and uh was running really well and then to just have your run ended by another guy that just doesn't you know doesn't want to race anyone with any respect um it sucks it's a bummer because he was finally having a good run and uh ends with five laps down i believe by the end time it was all said and done after the two flat tires that resulted from the contact so just bummer um but overall it was a really fun race um a little hot sure but kansas i mean heck that racetrack put on a great great race um that that's the track and the racing it puts on is the reason it's going to get two dates and it's going to stay at two dates. Um, you know, the facility and the area around the track might need a little help in terms of like the actual at track experience. They have what they call the legends complex right next door. So there's malls and movie theaters and bass pro shops and a MLS stadium. Like there's all sorts of stuff right next to the racetrack, but in the actual racetrack area, the midway was a little weak, but again, the racing on track is so darn good. I can't even, I can't even like compare to it. So, um, that was really fun. I'm going to point out one other quick thing just because I, I did notice it this week. I think it was on Saturday. I'm going to show you a couple Kansas wins here though. Quick. Uh, there's 2020. Uh, you'll see it's a little bit dusty on the front. There's 2022. You see that one's really dusty on the front and the Bubba Wallace car is also going to be fairly dusty on the front. I did finally figure out, I think it's just the track aging because on Saturday night I literally had to wipe like a powder, a layer of powder or dust 
or sand off of uh, just my stuff, my arms, my shirt, my hat. Like it all had this layer of dust on it. And I think that's what's hitting the front of these cars and kind of almost sandblasting the noses of them is you have these uh, this track wearing out and almost turning into sand right in front of our very eyes. So um, kind of cool. I, I thought that was kind of neat that I was like, oh, this feels different to kind of feel the, the sand there and the, that stuff on my on my you know hands and stuff the same stuff that probably made all those cars look unique so you know that was kind of a neat thing to see so other than that guys like i said i just rambled for 20 full minutes on how good the kansas race was i had such a good time uh can't recommend kansas enough it's a really great experience if you get a chance to stay near the legends complex there's hotels and stuff over there but i mean there's a full-blown mall over there so there is no shortage of stuff to do over there. There is a lot to do in Kansas City. It was really fun. Hope you guys have a chance to make it out there. But otherwise, that will pretty much wrap up this review from me. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed. This has been Race Craze, and we will see you later with our next Diecast Review.